A good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Thomas. This is Tenet, it's a human, and welcome to the special Games Guide edition of Barbarian Invasion, where today we look at how to play as the Western Empire Rebels. Yes, yes, indeed, the Western Empire. Uh, this campaign <laughs> estimated hard. That is a catastrophic underestimation, if ever there was one. Yeah, this campaign is ridiculous. It is just like bananas on toast. Yeah, let's let's have, have a look at this because this campaign truly is madness, and it is where. Um, we, we do need to obviously have a little look at the start of the game because the Western Empire Rebels don't exist quite just yet. Now, obviously, if you've played the game, you will know that once one of the towns rebels, it creates a new faction in this game. Indeed, look, just look at all the revolting towns. Oh, look, Vindalacorum's fine. But yes, around the map, almost all of them are red-faced. They're all very unhappy. Even Rome, even Rome, even with a low tax rate, is only just placated to 100. Cafago Nova actually is a really good example of this. Even with a low tax rate, daily games, and what, a pretty good garrison, as good as they've got in the Western Empire, still still revolting on 65. It is it's just a travesty, the start of this game. And indeed, that is what you're going to see right at the start. So we're going to press end turn a couple of times, which will just let the revolt start to happen. <laughs> and indeed, uh, near half of the Empire has just flipped over. That is magnificent. Oh, yes. So... Yeah, straight away, two turns in, and we've got civil revolts all over the place. And indeed, that is um, that's the sort of thing that will happen if you play this game and you don't try and do anything to solve it. Indeed, actually, God, we've even got civil disorder in all of these cities as well, so we're going to have more go very soon. Yeah, if you don't do anything at the start of this game, you're going to have huge, huge problems. Um, it's a great little challenge. This. We might do a video on this another time, actually, on how to do this campaign, because it's awfully, awfully fun. Um, realistically, you're not going to hold on to it all. Um, it's not worth it. It's not the best way of doing it. But um, we'll come to that another time. For now, though, we want to think about how you can play as these plucky little fun rebels over here. Because one thing I really like about them is that they, you know, they're one of those emergent factions, like the Slavs, like the Romano-British that we've looked at in previous videos. They, um, they represent an interesting period in the Roman history here because, what is the year? 364. 364 AD. And indeed, Julian the Apostate, the uh, pagan emperor of Rome, was uh, in 363, or the last pagan emperor of Rome, I should say, was in 363. He died battling Sharpur II on Sassanids. Huge military defeat for the Romans. And his successor, what, Jovian, he didn't last very long. He never made it back to Constantinople. He died over by Ancyra. And this lucky chap over here... I don't know how lucky he is, really. Uh, Valentinian, he became the emperor in 364 AD. Now, he donned the purple. He gave his brother Valens the um, the uh, eastern title. And he actually, you'll find Valens sitting in this empire city of the east over here. Now, during his reign, Valentinius the Wrathful. <laughs> uh, you know what? He was more of a soldier than a statesman. But um, actually... Actually, that's a little bit unfair because he was probably the last, and he is actually considered the last great Western Roman emperor because after him, it really did all go to put. I don't know. It just all went wrong after him, really. Um, obviously, it is called barbarian invasion, lots of barbarian invasions, but there was also a lot of civil strife within the Roman Empire itself, which is kind of what the East, what this, uh, what these rebel faction kind of, kind of represent some of the revolt and some rebellions. Now. In the time of Valentinius over here, he actually did manage to squash those rebellions. So there was one particular one, the Great Conspiracy, over in Britannia, where his, um, his men on Hadrian's Wall over here, um, well, they just kind of, they revolted. They let the Picts and the Scots in, as well as the Saxons from over in Denmark kind of area. And there was a huge, big problem trying to take back Britannia. But indeed, Valentinian did manage to uh, succeed in suppressing that revolt during his reign. And indeed, there was another one in North Africa, but he managed to keep it together just about. And so as a result, whilst known as a horrible, <laughs> wrathful man, he actually kept two bears as pets and used them to tear apart people that he didn't like. Uh, <laughs> random side note there. But um, no, he was one of the last men to keep this all together. But we want to play as some of these rebels. We want to have some of the fun that you can see here of tearing it all apart. So... You know, uh, I like to see the world burn, so let's play as the Rebels. That's kind of what we do on this channel. Um, so, how do you play as the Western Rebels then? Well, you need to have a little fiddle with the game files, as ever. It's actually very simple. It's um, it's definitely more simple than the Slavs or the Romano-British. But what we do need to do is pick a city to start in. Now, I personally go for Berdigala. 
this one over here, Canaeus Flavius and his Free Federati Infantry. He's actually, uh, yes, he's the yes Household Cavalry lad. Um, but I like this city, partly because it is one of the most frequent ones to rebel. On this occasion, it's actually gone the other way. But um, I think it's interesting because you can kind of head off in different directions. It's also a bit tricky because there's quite a big army here, which if if that doesn't rebel, this army comes to smash you straight away, which is what I found when I've tried it. I also think if you pick something else, like say you pick this army down here, this lad would probably smash through all of Spain. You take it over quite quickly. What I want is a bit more... I don't know. You can play it how you like. I like it to be a little bit more random in terms of, uh, you know, this is my base. I'm sort of struggling to hold on, but I'm getting other things pop up around the Empire. I like to play it that way. I think Berdegarda is a good balance as a settlement to choose. But you, of course, can choose any of them. If you wanted ours, for example, you just have to go make sure that you take the uh, Nub yes, the uh, Narbonesis region, Narbomartius, and you go and find Opius Flavius rather than Gnaeus Flavius, who is who we're going to pick. So I'm going to show you how to do this and give yourself Berdegala, but if you want, you can go and give yourself whichever city you like. So let's head into the game files and let's see how this is done. Assuming you know where Steam Library is, inside there is the Steam apps and the common folder, and inside there is a games list of currently installed games. If you go into Rome Total War, inside there is the Barbarian Invasion folder written as BI. Do you remember this is a DLC, so it won't be listed separately. Um, the only other way you might find it is if you've still got the old CD, it might come under Activision instead rather than the Steam, but most people nowadays are indeed playing it on the Steam version. Now inside Barbarian Invasion, you want to go to Data. Inside Data is the World folder down at the bottom. Onto Maps, Campaign, Barbarian Invasion, and then we have the file we need, which is the Deska underscore Strat. Inside the Deska Strat folder, is the basic kind of script for the game. And here you'll see the list of playable factions. We want to take Empire West Rebels from the non-playable section, cut them out, make sure you get your formatting right, and paste them into the playable section. And that is all you need to do for some of the factions like the Celts, Burgundy, Isle, Lombardi, Roxolani, and the, the Berbers and the Slaves, the Rebels, but for us, we need to do a little bit more to make the faction exist. So that's the basic starting point. Now, if we look for Empire West Rebels, we will be able to find our faction. So down here, Fortified Stalin. Uh, this is some of the dev commentary, I think, just to give a kind of vague concept of the mentality of the faction, I think. Um, we don't need to worry about that. That is um, dead until resurrected. That's what we need to get rid of, because that at the moment means that the faction is dead. It doesn't exist. It's an emergent one. Re-emergent just means it will come back after they die, but actually if you lose the campaign, the game will just say you lost, back to the menu with you. Um, or the, if the game theoretically continued, I guess the faction would re-emerge just without you playing. We don't need to worry about that, we'll leave that in there. Denari of Zero, I don't like to change it personally, I think if you're going to play this, you're playing it as a kind of challenge anyway, or a bit of fun. You obviously can give yourself some Denari to start with, most factions do, even the slaves there, you see the rebels have 10,000. Um, I'm going to leave it blank, but you can, of course, change that. It doesn't take very much to change. Now, we need a settlement to get us going. So, we are going to look for Aquitaine. And, as I said in the introduction, Aquitaine, Aquitaine is going to be one that we... You've got to search up or down, make sure you get that correct. Um, Aquitaine seems to me a sensible choice. Of course, you can choose whatever you wish. This is just my personal choice of town. It's not a particularly good one, it's just it's the one I've gone for. So, paste that in there. If you ever need a reminder, you can always look at the next one along, the slaves here, and you can see settlement is just straight after the monies. So, you don't need a gap there, you're absolutely fine. You can, of course, change the population, add some buildings in if you want to. Obviously, the more you change, the more likely it is you're gonna make a mistake and there'll be problems. I will just paste in the basic town there. Now, with a town, we're fine, but we need a character now. We need a family member and we need an army. So, we are going to go for Canaeus. Now, Canaeus in the Roman faction. Ah, Canaeus Flavius. We need to delete him from the family tree, first of all. So, let's take him out of there. So, he's been wiped out of their family tree. I'm just going to, yeah, just put that back across. But now we're going to go up and we're going to take him for ourselves. So he's been deleted from their family tree 
and Canaeus Flavius, he is in the right coordinates. He was the man in Aquitaine. So if you do take another town, you've just got to bear in mind which character you need to take. Because otherwise what happens is the game spawns in and immediately there's an army of a different faction in the town and it goes straight over to that faction and it gets conquered. Something like that, those lines. Basically, whatever character you take needs to match the coordinates of whichever town it is. If you're not sure, just load the game as the Western, Re as the Western Roman Empire and just check what the army is. So this is the army that was already in Aquitaine. So we've now got ourselves uh, an army, which gives us a position to start with. We'll just have a double space there. And we need to do just a couple more things before we're ready to go. But this is honestly simpler than the Romano Britons or the Slavs. We just need to change the name character here into leader. So if we head upwards, we should be able to find from the Romans their family leader. And somewhere, if we can find him, we'll be able to steal from his information. So, Roman faction leader. So, named character, comma, leader. And we're going to take the Roman faction leader as well. So, named character, leader. And you can copy and paste it in. You can just write it in. You're possibly more likely to make a mistake if you just write it. But on this particular occasion, it isn't too complicated. So I'm just going to add in one extra bit of trait in there, Roman faction leader. We can actually leave the ancillaries here. Office, um, yeah, so the hold of the household cavalry is his title. He can keep that. It's not a problem. We'll keep the torture. We haven't exactly got the nicest guy here. Harsh ruler, torture, and bezler, bad farmer, harsh ruler. Uh, he's an interesting one. He's an interesting one for sure. Um, but it's fine. It's fine. And to be honest, that's all you really need to do. Once you've got yourself town you've got yourself a general to match i will just take it straight out because the game is looking for names it recognizes um so i would just take the chap from the particular town you go for and yeah just have a quick check that you don't need to change anything you do need the leader trait so you've actually got a family tree and you might as well give them the trait faction leader whilst you do it but that should be all we need to do to start up the game as you open up the main campaign then you will see Western Roman Rebels are indeed an option. Good mixture of infantry and cavalry is limited, yes indeed. Much like the Romans, the Western Romans. So we're going to click on start and hopefully we're not going to have any problems. Fingers crossed. Nope, no hissy fit from the game. So we have our standard three messages at the start and we have Berdigala here losing tons of money. Let's just try... Well, if we whack the tax rate up we're going to have a rebe rebellion already. Marvellous. Oh, we're the Augustus. Marvellous. Emperor of half the Roman world. Not quite half. Kind of one region of half of it. But we'll, we'll take it. We'll take that. Absolutely we will. So yes, you've got yourself your little region to start with here. And you will get, much like if you play as the rebels, and as you'd expect for this, if there are rebellions in the Western Roman Empire, they will join you. So if we end our turn here, we'll get ourselves a new benefactor. Marvellous, he is now family member, not family heir interestingly, not the faction heir, intriguing, but that's fine. Um, presumably we can still play with that and have no problems with that in the family tree. Set him as the faction heir, why not? Dumb. You, I don't know if you don't set that if your faction leader dies and you just lose. <laughs> I suspect the game will sort it out for you, but you might just want to make sure you're careful with that. So Berdegala continues to lose money. And at this point, you're just clicking on enter. Now, you can, of course, be aggressive, go for one of their towns. Their army's gone south. So let's just go and attack the town up to the north. Woohoo! And obviously, if you don't have any money, what you've got to do is go and sack a town. So that's really going to be your first position here. And we're going to lose. Oh, no, we've retreated. And obviously, when you play this game normally, what often happens is... There, the Western Empire will have a rebellion. This faction pops up and they get crushed. And like every five turns it sort of it rises and it falls. And that's kind of what you're seeing here. But obviously you can't afford to let it fall. And of course if we lose this now to this siege, he doesn't want to do it. If we lose this to this siege, we obviously lose full stop. And this is going to be the game. And our victory conditions have failed. So you can't actually just go in can't actually go in and simply expect to be re-emergent. So you've got to keep yourselves alive. So it could be quite tricky, but it could be good fun. 
Right, I have reloaded the game on a slightly easier difficulty just because that makes the rebellions for the Western Romans a bit more likely. And as we indeed get started, let's get ourselves some peasants, some extra men. Why not, eh? You should start to see. Wow! Okay, yes, yeah, so as I said, the, the, lo the lower the difficulty, the more likely it is that you'll, the, you know, the computer will have problems with rebellions. So, yes. Wow, even Rome flipped. That is just crazy. Maybe don't play this on easy, ladies and gentlemen. Because that does seem a little bit ridiculous. I think that is definitely going to be... I haven't not played this game. I don't think I ever played this game on easy even when it first came out. Either way, you have seen that you will indeed, like the rebels, like you'd expect for the Western rebels, be able to flip the settlements over. Now, when I've done this before, I have started a little game on this and very hard just to kind of see what happened. I haven't had any bugs. The only bug I have had is Kafaganova crashing the game, but that's actually happened on my main campaign as well. This just seems to be a problem with that city in general. I haven't actually encountered any errors specifically with doing this. It seems to work pretty damn well. Um, and yeah, from this point, you can you can decide to be the new Augustus, as this chap does indeed declare himself to be. I mean, at this point, he is the new Augustus of the Western Empire. Ah, uh, my, 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 well, the new, yes. Yes, indeed, indeed he is. Well, you know what? We've even got Carriage Ballista over here. This is marvellous. I might just continue this, ladies and gentlemen. This looks like an awful lot of fun. Yeah, I, obviously, playing whatever difficulty suits you, I would just say, obviously... On very hard the rebellions are more infrequent but I haven't said that I have done it myself and I did tend to find this one always flips uh, Kafaganova often flips you know Salamantica's flips so you will get them flipping around even if you play on very hard and you know it's a bit of a different campaign quite a lot of fun so do have a bit of fun with this ladies and gentlemen um, I think this is a particularly unusual campaign I mean the rebels themselves are a fun campaign you get the rebel the armies popping up and you get the the revolts. Look at this, the loyalist revolts happening all over the place. These guys have risen up against their wicked masters. Indeed they have. These guys want to be part of our anarchy. The uh, the slightly more green Roman anarchy than we normally do on this channel. But you know what? That is marvellous. I think I think you've seen enough of this right for now, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to have a lot of fun with this. A bit of a different campaign and really pretty easy to set up. Um, very minimal in terms of the editing of the files, especially compared to Romano British or indeed the Slavs. This one is much less fiddly. So get yourselves on this and have a go at this campaign. It looks awfully fun. Um, I'll probably do one for the for the Eastern Roman Empire as well, coming up very soon, because this one was quite fun to set up. And indeed, whilst this would be fun to do, I think the Western Roman Empire is quite easy to crumble. The Eastern Empire is sort of the next one up, I think, because if we've got to fight the Eastern Empire, they're a lot stronger. So we'll get on that very soon. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, with the, with the vision of Rome flipping on turn two, three, was it? I will leave you. Um, yes, I'm Sir Mr. Tenez Human, and this has been the Game Guides to play as the Western Roman Empire Rebels in Barbarian Invasion. Thank you, and bye-bye. By Jove, it is a marvellous, marvellous day. Spiffing, one would say. Anyone for pimps. He has seen the light. He's joined the anarchy. He is cruel and cunning. And you know what? He likes a little drink, and I think that's marvellous. La 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 la, chop your way through the peasants. One shot! No!